podcast, I have the honor of introducing to you guys to Naga Desh from Hidden Christians Ministries. Hidden Christians Ministries is an organization focused on helping kids and teens who have come to the Christian faith but are not able to express it freely in their home. Naga Desh has personally come out from the Hindu faith where his parents were opposed to Christianity. So hear his story and how he proclaimed the faith and now is leading people to Christ through his ministries. Um, welcome back guys to Selfless Gospel. Today I have the honor of presenting to you guys Naga Desh. His testimony is so powerful and it really just just show the boldness in Christ that he has had throughout his walk. So I'm really excited to just talk to him more about what he is doing and to share more of what he has been doing for the kingdom of God. So Naga Desh, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me, Fatima. Thank you. Yeah. How are you doing today? Well, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm so blessed to just be here and actually just have this interview with you. I know we've, we've done our fair share of testimony nights before, but I'm super grateful to be on your channel and just learning more about you and just kind of like sharing what we're doing here with Hidden Christians. Yeah, no, I'm really excited to just talk to you more about that because I think earlier, if you guys were on the TikTok live, we were actually just discussing how only four to six percent of missionaries work with the unreached people groups. And that's something that I know is definitely in God's heart, that his heart is for everyone. It's not just for the people that are here. Um, it's for every single person to come to Christ. And I feel like you're doing that with hidden Christians because you're connecting with a lot of people who are in different religions, whether they're Muslim, Hindus, people from all different backgrounds, because typically people tend to have family members. So that's how you start to reach out to people, even from where you are. But the question that I like to always ask people is, when was the moment that you knew that this was Lord and Savior? Mm, that's a good question. Um, it had to be back in sophomore year of high school. I was, invi I, I was invited to go to youth group uh, from a girl. And first, I thought it was a date. So I was like all dressed up. I was ready to Aww. go. And I, yeah, and my mom dropped us off because I couldn't drive. So she dropped me off at youth group. And I, I walk in and I see so many people in the lobby. And I'm like, whoa, this is the weirdest environment I've ever been in. Like, oh my gosh, like, what is this a big group date? I do not understand what is, what's going on here. And she comes up to me. She's like, hey, I'm glad you made it. And I'm like, made it to what? What is the youth group, right? Because like growing up, I didn't go to youth group. I didn't go to church. Like, I didn't know any of these things, right? Church camp, none of it. And uh, she comes up. And so we just start talking. And then the doors open. You know how there's a countdown, the timer and stuff. The doors open. We go into the auditorium. And it's just like a bunch of people there. I was like, this is cool, right? Mm -hmm. Then the worship band gets on stage and everybody just erupts in song. And I'm like, from someone who has never been in a church environment, this was the weirdest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> and um, that was kind of when, when I just started singing with them because I felt pressured. Everybody else was singing. So I was like, fine, I'll sing. But I started singing with them. And that was when I felt peace in my heart. Mm. That was when I felt like just someone was smiling down on me and I was at the right place because I felt like I was at home for the first time. I felt like love yeah. was there. And that was when I kind of knew that, wait a minute, like this is a special place. Like, you know, God is real. And, um, and so that's when I started my journey of faith as someone who was born into a Hindu family and not knowing anything. And that's kind of like when I just started learning about more about Jesus. Right. And that's really powerful because I think that's a reminder to all of us that you are able to see Christ in people. And that's the experience you had from just being in that moment for seeing people praising and worshiping God. And then when you start to sing and praise, you felt peace in your heart. And that's really cool to just know that you had that experience in that moment. Um, what was going through your mind? Because were you practicing, were you practicing Hindu at the time? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my parents, we always went to church, uh, 
temples and we had like pujas at the house we always invited people over and we were basically my mom is she's very you know she's very religious and so it's just like constant prayer asking you know these um you know kind of like statues when we go to temples asking these gods like hey you know like this is we're giving money so that you know we can receive mm -hmm. money right mm -hmm. and uh, this is the goddess of wealth and it's just like we lived in an environment where that was all we kind of knew me and my little sister mm -hmm. and it wasn't until like I was invited to church to youth group that was when like I felt like wait a minute this is something that I personally like felt peace for the first time you know like I, I felt like this was I felt like Jesus was in that moment someone that who someone that just full of love and that was what attracted to me about God was just like he was loving everybody because growing up I was an outcast I felt like yeah. you know I didn't really belong right and um I didn't you know I wasn't the most popular kid in school I wasn't you know I didn't have my friend group right like in how I met your mother or friends like I didn't have yeah. that group of friends that I can always lean on yeah. and so I was I was just like always asking like man I, I I've always wanted that and so that's why I always loved on people right whether it was like the person who was like brand new to school, I was like, no, I know that feeling. So I'm yeah. going to go talk to you. I don't want you to feel like that because I've been there before. Mm -hmm. And it's the same way I felt when I'm just like, um, I just felt like Jesus was the same exact way. He was the one who went after the one, right? Left the 99, went after the one person. Amen. And there's there was so much in that. That was just so, so good. But I actually want to ask you, what do you think was the most difficult thing about when you first became a believer, especially since you said that your mom is a very religious person? I honestly can't imagine how difficult that is, but I know that there's people that are listening to the podcast right now that can relate to you, that have a similar story where they are one of the first Christians in their family. I can't imagine how tough that would be. But I know that Christ is giving you the strength and the courage in that. And I love that you're doing um, the whole hidden Christian group. That's like the thing that I just like really love that you're doing. And it's amazing because you can definitely see God working in that. And I actually wanted to talk to you more about that. When did you first start to get the idea in creating the hidden Christian groups? Because you went from first becoming a believer, you left the Hindu faith, which I know that must have not been easy, especially with the reaction that you said your parents had. I'm sorry that you went through that. Um, but it, the verse that actually reminds me of that, it's Luke 14, 26. And it's that you must, and this is a really, I'm going to post a verse up here so you guys can see it. But it's that you must hate your father, your mother, and your children in order to follow Christ. And it's not that It's not that you hate them. That's not what it means. It's that you must be willing to leave everything behind to follow Christ. And that's what you did. Like you followed Christ. And that's a really tough thing. Um, I think definitely we need to have a Bible study on that verse because I guess taken out of context a lot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it just really does show the courage that you have. Um, so when did you start to create the hidden Christian groups? And what has been the toughest thing about starting the group? Uh, we started the, the group back in uh, uh, March slash April around uh, it's kind of like the midway point over there because um, it started off with a post that I basically there was a TikTok trend and that TikTok trend had the quote you know the motivational the negative things that someone told you in motivational quotes right <laughs> <laughs> I remember I was, that one <laughs> you remember that one yeah 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 <laughs> And I remember saying, thinking like, okay, let's just do pat, funny pastor one-liners, right? And I was just about to post it. And then God was like, wait. And I'm like, what? Why? You know, why wait? And God was just like, wait. And I was like, okay, fine. And <laughs> God was like, say the thing that your parents told you, mm -hmm. right? All those things. I'm like, wait a minute. God, isn't that mean? Because they're good people, right? They are, they're generally good people. Right. And he's just like, no, 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 say it. And I'm like, no, God, please. But eventually, you know, God, he gets his way. You know, who am I? And I, I <laughs> ended up posting it. And um, and then God, like, blessed it abundantly because uh -huh. it went viral. 
and it touched like thousands, hundreds of thousands of people's lives. And that's when like people started reaching out to me, right? They started reaching out to me, asking me like, hey, you know, I, I, I'm a Christian too, but, and I'm in the same situation as you, you know, I, I'm in a Hindu family, I'm in a Muslim family. How did you tell them? Right. Okay. What did you say? Like, how did that situation go out? Like, I want to know more. And so then I was just like, wait a minute, like there are other people across the world doing this. Right. And so then I just kind of had this idea where it's just like, okay, what if I created like a discord group where we can have like, you know, helping people overcome temptation. It was like, like, I'm thinking one thing, right. And God was thinking something completely different. He's like, <laughs> did you just miss the point? It's like, <laughs> you're, you're supposed to do this. I'm just like, no, 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 God, I want to do this. I want to do this right here. You know, like, this is what I know. And God was like, no, no, no. I know you don't know what this is. Mm-hmm. I know that you don't know how to like, you know, any of this, but I want you here. I can lead uh, you over here. Yeah. And so originally I named the community, right? Cause I wanted to still help people overcome temptation. Cause sometimes we get a little stubborn and we are like, okay, I want my way. And God works with us still. And I created Christian Warriors. And it was cool. Awesome. And I guess that was, but I never like posted about it. never talked about it because I still felt like, you know, there's something that God wanted to do. So eventually God gave this idea called hidden Christians. He just like said it. Like it was even just like the a name. Of. Even the name, <laughs> even the name. I had no idea. That was not me. That was all Jesus. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, he created the, the community and then we started posting it. And then like people just started joining from all across the world, telling their testimonies of who they are, what they've gone through, you know, their family situations. And so we grew from like nothing to like a, a community over 700 people, right? Wow. We have Bible studies. We have, um, we have Bible studies. We have daily devotions. We have movie nights and like we have life groups and all these different things. And like, these are things that I never expected to do, but mm-hmm. God used different people to tell me, like, tell us and lead us in the right direction. That's honestly really amazing. I didn't know that when you first started planning uh, the group that you had something completely else in mind. And then God was like, no, we're going to do this. <laughs> 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 That's amazing because um, I'm not going to say it perfectly, but it reminds me of Proverbs 16, 9, how God directs our steps. And you saw that happening. God was leading your steps. You were planning your course, but God knows our steps. And it's, it's honestly really amazing to just see everything that you're doing in that, because I've seen the group chat and it's really cool to just see everyone being a part of it. And especially when you mentioned that you guys are getting, are planning on doing mission trips sometime in the future. That made me really excited. I'm really excited for that. And I'm definitely praying for you. And I know that people that are listening to this are going to be praying for your ministry. So for sure, be praying for that. Um, I'm going to pre- pray that God starts to prepare people's hearts and their minds and their souls for this. So that's really cool. And that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. That's yeah. all. Glory goes to God, dude. Amen. And, yeah. Calling any of calling like a, kid who probably wasn't meant to be a Christian, right? Some days I'm just like, dude, the, the odds of me becoming a Christian are insane. But like, you know, he made a way, right? right? The odds of God saving us, insane, but he made a way. Yeah, yeah. It really does show that when we are his children, God will find a way mm-hmm. to like share the gospel with us. And that's really cool. But we are getting ready to close up the podcast. I'm really sad to get going. But Nagadesh, I wanted to see if there's an ending message that you would like to share with people who are listening, whether it's someone who is curious about Christianity, who is struggling with telling their parents or whatever it is that you want to share. Yeah. Um, I think the biggest thing for you to remember is that you're not alone. This is something that I struggled with for so many years when I was alone. You know, I ran to temptation for comfort when I was alone, when my parents were off working and I was just at home and I had nothing else to do. Like, right. you know, I just felt so alone. And, and I thought that that's what my home was, you know, like I would always be alone. And so that's where I was always sad. I was always just broken. Right. But Jesus died on the cross so that we may never be alone. God sent his only son on, down to earth so that we can never be alone. And when you, when you choose to repent, 
repent from that loneliness that you feel and actually turn to Jesus who's sitting right next to you and asking you, hey, are you ready for the life that I want to give you? Hey, that's when you know that like you were never alone in your darkness. You were never alone. Mm -hmm. You were never home alone. He was always with you. His hand was always over your life. And so if you are thinking about telling your parents, if you're thinking about, you know, ending it all or whatever, because you feel so alone in your life, I want you to understand that you will never be alone with Jesus. He's always there with you and he will strengthen you and he will help you endure and he will bless you with more. A promise from God is worth everything. And he right. has promised you life, a kingdom of heaven. And, um, and I know that I've seen growing up in the church, I've seen everybody else, right? Jesus went to everybody else. And I always wondered why Jesus never came into my life, right? Mm -hmm. And never spoke to me. And so until I opened up my heart and I prayed this prayer of just, Lord, I don't want anything else. I don't want an angel. I don't want, you know, I don't want the devil. I don't want, you know, lust. I don't want these things, Father. I just want to know what it's like to have a relationship with you. Okay. I just want to know what Jesus is like. I just want to know why everybody else has this feeling. I just want to understand who he is, the one that gives it. And when you pray that prayer, when, when you ask God, oh, Jesus, walk, Jesus will walk in. He'll mm. walk in. <laughs> oh, and it's uh, so good. Mm -hmm. That was so, amazing. God bless you guys. God bless you. Yeah, and God bless you. That was a beautiful message to end with. And it is so, so, so important that for those of you guys who are listening to this, as Naga was saying that you are reminded that you are not alone, that Christ is with you, even in the darkness. Please never forget that. It's amazing to just know that we have a God who will go through us wherever we go. And that just shows how much God loves us. He's such a good, good father. Um, but Naga Desh, I want to thank you so much for being a part of the Selfless Gospel Podcast. It's been really cool to just have you on here. Um, I had you on here a few different times, but it's really cool to just have you on the podcast. I'm excited to see what God is doing in your ministry, what he's going to continuously just do in you. So thank you again for being here today. And guys, if you guys have any questions for Naga, I'm going to leave down his information down below so you guys can check out his social medias, the Discord group, everything so you guys can see what he is doing. And please don't forget to hit subscribe and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. 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 Bye.